The Shelby City Park Carousel Friends were organized in 1991 to assist the city of Shelby both financially and artistically with the restoration of their antique carousel. The group consists of hundreds of volunteers who have contributed generously of their time, their talents, their money, and their enthusiasm for the project. And we are certainly grateful for all the support of all of our carousel friends. On a more personal note, my grandfather, Doc Dorton, was the one who brought the carousel to Shelby in the early 1950s. So I feel kind of a family responsibility and obligation to be involved with the project. It's been a lot of hard work, but a very rewarding experience. Dr. Dorton was uh, instrumental on the, on the parks board, I think, because of the being manager of the Cleveland County Fair and president of the North Carolina Association for five years, from 48 to 52. He knew the carnivals and the fairs and the people that used these carnivals and probably uh, was more qualified than most people in Shelby to find a carousel. I find things out here, I found things out here when I come to the fair 20 years ago that Dr. Dorton had done and how he could take a little piece of tin or or a pine pole, make a flag pole out of it at, no, at hardly no cost and make it look uh, like, a, like a, fi a fine sign or a light pole. And uh, because uh, uh, he could take a, he had a real imagination. I could improve on things, but Dr. Dorton could originate things. to Shelby. They didn't have any place to store it. So they stored it under the grandstand at the fairground. And some of the members of the park board got concerned about the carousel. And they wanted to take it out of, and put it in assembly. And she was all the parts there. So just, they got a man from Saint, uh, Lake Louis been working with a carnival for a long time. So he came down and so he put it together. And uh, fortunate that we did take it out that day. That night the grandstand burned down. So the carousel missed a narrow chance. I can remember Saturdays that um, when my mom would take me over to the city park and we'd ride the carousel. 
And usually after I had ridden it several times, then we'd go and we'd ride the, the train ride and everybody would scream as we went through the tunnel. Then afterwards we would go and, um, and ride or, or eat snow cones and then my mom would take me on a pony cart ride because there was a fellow out there that used to have little pony cart rides. Um, I feel like the, the time that I spent on the carousel may have had contributed to me going ahead and riding horses when I got older because I had, I had a little pony that was named Lydia and I think one of the ponies that's on the carousel, they're painting the same colors as, as Lydia, who is my pony. I hope that my kids will be able to enjoy riding the carousel as much as I did growing up because I have a lot of fond memories of riding the carousel. Having grown up across the street from the city park anyway, your parents would just let you go and run around when you were that age and not worry about them like we would our kids now. So we went to the carousel and the train, spent a lot of time there. It was just part of the park. You, you swam for a while and you swang for a while and then you just went down the carousel and rode it two or three different times, listened to all that music that thing put out. It didn't sound like any radio or anything else you heard. It was a it was safe and it was fun and all the kids in the neighborhood were there at the same time and a great way to spend part of your day. In the, in the early 50s, the um, City Park Carousel and the miniature train um, that was sponsored by the Shelby Rotary Club, um, both were integral parts of the Shelby Parks and Recreation System. Um, they operated in, in that function until uh, the late 70s or early 80s, at which time we had a uh, derailment of the miniature train and had some injuries and decided to cease operation of both and reevaluate uh, their future. There was uh, a push by some of our city leaders to, uh, to sell the carousel piece by piece. Um, I made several trips to Raleigh and to Burlington, uh, the, the closest cities that we were aware of that had carousel restoration projects. Both had restored carousels and uh, were operating them. Uh, the Raleigh group, uh, the restoration group in Raleigh, gave us a, uh, a proposal to, to, to completely restore our carousel. Uh, that estimate was approximately $140,000, which it, at that time to our city leaders seemed like uh, a lot of money. Uh, 
in retrospect, it, it wasn't much at all. Um, but we did not uh, hire the group to restore the carousel. Instead, received some port barrel money of about $50,000 to help us start our reg uh, restoration project. It happened that I was taking a photography course at, at the community college and was looking for subject matter for, uh, for photography. And riding around the park, I saw the old carousel and the horses sitting in there and behind the weeds and the uh, fence. And that's when I met uh, Fane Hamrick one day and, and asked him what was happening about the carousel. And he said, well, we're looking for somebody to do some work on it. So I told him I'd like to come by and see what it might involve and the very first thing they had already the staff here at the park had already done some paint stripping and that was really all that was the first thing that needed to be done was to get rid of layers and layers of park paint so that's what I started out doing and from there it became uh, a process of seeing what was there what needed to be repaired um, what could be repaired, what could be saved, what couldn't be saved. And sometime in the, uh, in the past, probably in about the 1960s, uh, early 60s I would say, maybe even in the 50s, several horses were traded for about four other animals. There was a, a lion and an elephant and two dogs. Now the two dogs were Herschel Spillman manufactured and uh, they're more closely related. In fact, they're, of course, in the same company. They're, they're very closely related to our carousel. They're a little older than the rest of the figures. Our, generally, our carousel and figures is, I would say, a, a little over 75 years old. But the lion and the elephant are over 100 years old. And they are of a, a known manufacturer, a known carver, uh, named Charles Loof. And uh, they're, they're pretty rare, but, uh, and they're, they're special pieces, and a lot of people in Shelby remember them very well. Uh, we are not going to put them at this time back on the carousel. We're going to return it to an all-horse, all-jumping carousel. Now, the lion and the elephant were, never did jump. They were stationary, standing uh, figures. Really, that has a lot to do with their age as well as the type of figure, but the very first carousels didn't have any jumping mechanism. They were just a revolving platform with a, uh, standing animals. And it was later that the jumping mechanism was invented to go along with the circular motion.
to secure our paint, I did contact some of my companies that I'd done business with, and they donated paint and brushes. And then I called on some of my students that I'd had over the years and that I knew were good painters. And it does take a decorative painter because you learn brush control in decorative painting, and that's what I had taught. So I knew who had the control and was capable of doing the type of work that it would take for the horses and for the trim. It takes very exacting work. Creative Signs uh, gave us a lot of uh, sign painters enamel, which we use on the horses. And uh, we use just regular artist paint on the bodies and that goes on the uh, trappings the sign painters enamel does because it's a harder finish and should um, withstand more wear particularly where it comes in contact with the body oils of, of people. We are trying on these rounding boards and they're the ones that go up at the top on the outside and we are trying to use local scenes as far as we can, things that would be um, uh, from this area or could be from this area. There's six of these pieces on each panel and uh, they were um, cast by L.B. Izzy and was donated for the carousel. started there were uh, still a, a good number of horses to be restored. Most of the horses had been stripped of their old paint. Uh, the restoration of the original horses uh, was mostly the replacement of bad wood which uh, generally is the extremities of the horse, the ears and the feet and legs and tail and stuff like that. Um, <clears throat> so when I started carving down here, it was mainly carving legs and just replacing bad wood uh, in the original horses. Well, that went pretty well and spring of this year, we finished up the last original horse and there's still some empty positions on the ride so um, I was asked to carve three new horses and we uh, chip off all the wood that's not needed and leave the final product there with uh, carving work like this you you work on it day after day and when you get done you can step back and look at it and say I'm done and I did the best I could and be proud of what you did so it's it's a different kind of work and it uh, it is rewarding
what has occurred is that City Council has agreed there is a compelling public interest in restoring our historic carousel, but perhaps in today's tight money times for municipal governments, the city could not justify doing the entire project. So we have what amounts to approximately $200,000 being supplied by the Friends of the Carousel through private contributions and the city has dedicated most recently $201,000 approximately for the public portion. We want to name it in memory of my sister, Andover Bailey. She and I used to meet out here with our children and get together. They'd play and we'd talk. We'd have a good time. So it's an appropriate thing for us to do in her memory.